So I threw a batch of soap today for content because that's what we do. Also, it's been a while since I screwed anything up. So, you know, I thought I was due. Now, before we talk about why I threw a batch of soap today, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And today we're making the soapy messes. And here's the thing. Here's the reason why I decided to do this. So there are a lot of people out there on the, the forums and the Facebook pages and the things that are first time soap makers and they are learning as they go and they don't have a chemistry background and they are just sort of going off of, you know, videos and stuff. And they will post pictures and say, what's wrong with my soap? And, you know, people who have been doing this for a while will say, well, people say a lot of things about what's wrong with the soap, really. And there's no real rhyme or reason to their answers. But I have noticed with that, that there are never a lot of examples. I don't know if there are any examples actually out there of what certain types of soaping errors or soaping fails, you know, look like. And I've done a couple of them, right? I did the beer soap dumpster fire where everything went wrong, separation, rising, acceleration. God, that was terrible. And you know, I've done a couple other things, but today I thought I would show you a lie heavy bar and what a lie heavy bar looks like. One of the reasons for that is I actually do get a lot of messages from other soapers that have either taken my classes or have seen me, you know, on the interwebs, sending me pictures saying, is my soap lie heavy? Here's the thing, you can tell when a soap is lie heavy almost off the bat. And so I am going to be showing you what that looks like today and how you can avoid it. So I'm gonna stop talking about the fact that I ruined perfectly good oils and butters and material for YouTube content right now and we're gonna go watch me ruin it. Okay, throw a batch today. So what we have in the oils, it is my uh, basic three. So we have equal parts olive, coconut, and palm. At 10.5 ounces, we have 3.42 ounces of distilled water with 1.57 ounces of lye that went into that. So the actual lye recipe with this, the lye water solution, is what it's supposed to be for that. But you see, I just barely mix that. That's not even close to emulsification. It's just, you know, nothing going on. It's been pulsed a couple times. You can still clearly see that there are still oily pockets. It hasn't, hasn't even changed in color, right? And so this is, you know, the super quick mix. And we are going to pour it in and see what you know, comes of this bar. Like you look at that right there and you can totally tell that that's not emulsified. It's still very oily. Now we're gonna pulse it a little bit more and see if we can get closer to emulsification with this and then pour the next one here. And you see that, you see how it's actually get, looks like it's close to emulsification, but it's starting to separate right there on the stick. Yeah, it's not emulsified. So we are now going to take this and pour it into the uh, the next little thing there in the tray and see what that one does. Now, we're going to get the rest of this soap batter to proper emulsification. So we are going to 
and look at that. We have what is very close to a solution there. So that is, if not at emulsification, very, very close to emulsification. So for the final three though, we are going to do some different stuff. Now the first is we are going to make a soap that has a scent blend in it. So this is a fragrance oil that's in this. And I don't know which one it is, I just randomly selected something from the shelf. So we get extra mixing going on in this, right? To actually get the, the fragrance oil incorporated. And you also get, you know, the fragrance itself that is speeding up the heat process in the soaps too. That will, you know, give your bars a fighting chance at emulsification if you aren't quite there. Now, the reason that we're doing this test, A, you know, it's nice to be able to see what a lye heavy soap looks like, but two, it's also nice to see all of the different stages of soap and how your different additives, right? Your scent, your colors, your clays, your second water or liquid phase, what that does to the soap in getting it, you know, closer to emulsification or in fact achieving emulsification. Because with every addition you put in your, your soap, be it your colors, your scents, or whatever, you're mixing it more. And so you're giving your soap, you know, more of a, a fighting chance. And this was the reason why I really did have to throw this batch because it is very rare that I actually ever have. Yeah, did you see that? So like the differences, the three differences in the soaps there, the, the color is different, the actual, you know, texture and consistency completely different. We have something that's clearly oily on the left to more of a soap batter look in the middle there and something that actually does remember, re resemble soap on the right. Now for the last two soaps, the one with the yellow, that is just a uh, color. That's some mica that has been dispersed in a little bit of oil. And the final one is kaolin clay that has been dispersed in water. Now, again, while you are adding things, you are mixing, you are continuing to mix your, your soap and continuing to do that, you know, essentially mechanical you know, force to help with emulsification with each addition of your colors or your scents or your clays or whatever. And so you're getting your soap, it's more likely that your soap is actually going to hit emulsification if you're coloring it and scenting it and doing the thing. So that's why I had to throw this batch because it's very rare that you don't extra do, actually do extra things to your soap, right? And so I'm going to show you a batch that you know isn't properly emulsified to show a lye heavy soap. Um, if you've been doing the mixing of colors and scents or whatever, and you end up with these soaps that look you know like these ones will look at the end, you may have quite likely actually added in too much lye to the solution, and it's just properly lye heavy. Period. Not you know not not emulsified, but not just lie heavy the, the the formulation and the uh the measurements are wrong so again this is the kaolin clay that's been added to the final one and it's just going to get mixed in and poured into the mold as well and i am not going to see pop these i am going to let them sit out on the counter overnight and they are just going to do their thing we are not going to do anything else with these soaps because again the extra heat phase actually helps your bars get closer to you know emulsification and a properly formed bar too so we're not going to do that we're just going to show you what these soaps look like when it's not mixed not emulsified and you know all that jazz so we will take a look at this after it has time to set up overnight okay it is time to check these out and we've got some messy soap here we yep this is this is gonna be fun so this is the first one that we just did you know a couple mixes with there's not a lot going on you see how crumbly it is and it's just very dry and the top has the weird bubbling going on yeah that is not a good bar of soap that is a lie heavy bar of soap if you can break it in two like that your bar is lie heavy I mean, you don't even need to test it at that point. It is not a good bar of soap, for sure. So most of the time, that is what a lye heavy bar of soap is going to look like. Now this one, a lot of soda ash on the top, and you can see it's also doing the cracks. It's very dry in the hand, too. This obviously isn't something that you can, you know, see via video, but very, very dry in the hand. 
Soda ash is a very thick layer, which actually suggests it's getting closer to. Yep, and then we have the crumbly bar too. Your soap should not break like that. That's that that, that should not be happening. Um, you know, salt bars can sometimes break like that, but honestly, with a salt bar, if it breaks like that, that was a problem with your recipe too. So this one is the one that had the fragrance in it. So we mixed this up a little bit further past the second, so closer to emulsification. And oh yeah, it's breaking like like a semi-soft cheese. And that's that's actually closer to a, a good bar of soap. Like that one could actually be fine for use. Um, you'd have to test the lather as well as the, the pH after it, you know, kind of cool, calms down a little bit. Now this was the one that had the um, colorant in it with a little bit of oil. Now remember the last three bars, I mean really all of the bars, the super fat is going to be different. Okay, so it's pulling apart like you would expect a bar of soap to pull apart at this stage. Um, yeah, so the, uh, again, the super fat is going to be different from bar to bar to bar throughout all of this because it wasn't a well-mixed batch when we started pouring the soaps, right? And so there was a lot more lye in the first two soaps, and then therefore a lot more oils in the final three. Now, that soap is the one that had the kaolin in it, and yeah, that is the one that is the best formed. It actually feels smooth in the hand. It does not feel overly sticky or dry, and that one is the one that would be, you know, the most successful as far as, you know, failed batch of soap goes. But in all honesty, the, the three that we did extra things to, those ones, to the naked eye, they look really good. They look like they would be ready to, you know, they, they're usable. And they may, in fact, be usable. Again, lie heavy bars, it's, they're kind of hard to get because you do so much work to the bars themselves to, you know, get all the colors and the extra stuff into them that you usually hit emulsification. So lie heavy bars, usually the reason it happens is not because you didn't hit emulsification, but because your recipe is, you know, hosed and you added too much lye or not enough oils. Your measurements were off. Now we are going to pH test these. I, I'm doing another video in a couple days, right, with a big pH test. And so we will test these bars again with the actual pH reader there at the bottom right. But this is just, you know, testing strips for all of these. And I'm an idiot, and so I actually double dipped that one and didn't actually get the one on the, the right hand side. So cool. Whoops. But yeah, and so just looking at the, the range there, we're between nine and ten on all of these bars. Now that is why pH strips like this, really not a good measurement of what a soap is whether or not it's lie heavy um again because look at that one that top one it's super dry if i were to zap test that it would burn the crap out of my tongue i'm not gonna but it would and now we're gonna do a lather test with these and this thing just falls apart in the hand right like things just they're coming off of it it's it's a mess of a bar it doesn't feel good to try to work up a lather it feels very fragile, just falling apart in my hand. So another, you know, sign that it's a bad batch of soap. That one did not work. You need to go back to your measurements. And this one, also a very crumbly bar. It was very easy to break open. And same thing. You have a little bit better of a lather, but also it had a lot of uh, soda ash on the top, and that creates a like a false lather right off the bat, which is super cool but also it's falling apart in the hand. It feels strange and fragile as I am using it. It's not working out well. Lather's not bad though. Now, moving on to the third that had the fragrance oil in it. And again, fragrance oils can actually help get to emulsification and trace and all that jazz pretty easily. It tends to accelerate because it heats everything up. And that lathers up nicely. That's very good. I, I like that a lot. That's not bad at all. It was not soft in the hand, did not um, feel fragile in the hand. It worked well through the, you know, the lathering process. And this one is the one that just has the color plus the extra oil to, you know, disperse the color in. And this would be a reasonably heavily super fatted bar at this point. So if I had to guess, I would say the super fat would be somewhere around 
maybe eight, nine percent with that particular bar. And so the lather is, you know, it's cute, but nice tight bubbles and it lathers well, it's holding up well. And this one too, I would say, you know, eight, nine percent of the for super fat because we lost a lot of the lye in the first two bars, right? And this is the one with Kaylin Clay, and obviously best lather out of all of them. It was the one that was mixed the most, and then Kaylin Clay also just helps, you know, things emulsify and harden up faster, clays in general. So there it is. We will do a deeper dive on the pH of these bars and what that all means and the proper way to test pH in a couple of days. But for now, those are some lye-heavy soaps, my friend. Those top two, no bueno. And there it is, the uh, lye-heavy soap. And you can totally tell, right? I mean, it is a noticeable difference. So I knew that it wasn't emulsified, and I went ahead and I poured some soap batter into the tray anyway, but then you saw the different stages of it as well from, you know, mixing in some kaolin clay, and so there's more mixing, and then mixing into, you know, some colors, and so then there's more mixing, and the rest of the bars, hey, they start to look better. So yeah, they're, again, for a lie heavy soap, you are going to be able to tell right off the bat, in most cases, whether or not you have fully emulsified your soap. And now you have an actual visual of what that looks like, and you also know how to avoid it. You make sure that you hit emulsification. Um, if you are interested in these lie heavy soaps, you can't have them. What are you crazy? Why would you want that? No, they're they're in the bin. I I I chuck them immediately. That's no. So no, you cannot have a lie heavy soap. You can have any of the other soaps that are at soapandclay.com though, if you would like. So go check that out. If you're interested in more soapy antics, subscribe to the channel. I like doing stuff like this. I like showing you obviously the chemistry and the process behind the actual soap making and why soap becomes soap or any of the other products that we work with. But I also like showing you what happens when you know soap goes bad. So you know what to look for during your soapy journey. Anyway, that really does it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me for another round and I will see you guys all tomorrow. Bye.